This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is, locked and loaded and ready to go. How you feeling, baby? I'm all right, man. How are you? Good. So what's the prediction? Does he play or does he not play? What do you think? Um, I don't. I honestly don't think they've made a decision yet. Um, I think that Jalen Ramsey was being truthful. I think uh, based on what we've seen in practice, he's looked great. Like I've talked to teammates who said he looks like his normal self. He looks like he's going to play Sunday. And so if you're asking his teammates, they think that he's going to play. Uh, and um, it wouldn't shock me. Like I think that that's certainly a reasonable conclusion that he would play. He got a whole week of practice last week, this week with the starting off, starting defense. Um, but the other thing is you don't want to rush it. And so I think you're going to see probably, my guess is, Mike McDaniel couches it and says, we're going to say, see how he does in practice today. And my guess is that he's going to be questionable on the injury report. And they're going to take this to the weekend. And they're going to have him do a walkthrough Saturday and maybe even do a Sunday morning workout to confirm. Um, but if I was a guessing man, I'd probably say he plays more likely than not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know for a while now that he has been freaking them out uh, the way he came back. And that's, you know, it's everybody's different, dude. No, no, we're not all the same. And one guy can suffer a concussion and he's back in four days. And another guy suffers a concussion and he's back in four months. Right. Right. And it, it, it's just a weird, you know, we went through this whole uh, pandemic crap with, uh, with uh, COVID and COVID could go through one person like a cold yep. and another person, it'll put them in the hospital, bro. I mean, Absolutely. you know, it, it's just DNA is something that even medicine hasn't figured out. Right. And some guy, some guys are freaks and he happens to be one of those guys. I, I, I almost get a feeling that they're still going to say, yeah, we're going to hold you out another week just in case, you know, because <laughs> that's why, that's why I, I like, like I'll say this um, because there was a lot yesterday about Jalen Ramsey and the reporting that came out and like rushing to conclusion, like, I don't get every scoop, but I, I'm always very cautious, especially with injury news, because mm -hmm. injury news is very variable, right? Um, for example, the player often has a different view than the team, and you have to be aligned in that view for a guy to return. Perfect example, last week, Xavier Howard told reporters definitively, oh, I'm playing, I'm playing, no worries. Like, like I, I wouldn't miss this one, right? Sunday comes. Team warms him up. The groin's not quite right, not quite moving right. Team says we're going to sit him. So if you were listening just to Xavier Howard, you're like, man, what happened? Like, why, why didn't he play? The team wasn't aligned with what X thought in that time. And, and players typically are overly optimistic. But I give Ramsey credit. Like, every step of knowing Ramsey, he knows his body. And he's the type of guy who's going to tell you, hey, I'm not feeling, you know, I'm I'm like 90%, but maybe maybe not 100% yet whereas most guys will like, "Oh, I'm good. I'm good." Even when they're they're not good. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I'm with you there. That's uh, it, it's it, it's just one of those situations. Now, it makes sense in all ways. He's mm -hmm. practiced for 2 weeks in a row, hasn't had any setbacks. Right? It's Go ahead. great. Get him out it's there. Great. Nick and he said great. that he was running a 22 mile per hour uh, uh, time speed in practice. They time all their speeds in practice, and 22 miles per hour will put them up in like that Tyree Kill, you know, Tyree Kill, Devon Achan, Raheem Mostert category. Now it's just practice, but that's telling me that he is full speed. Now the other elements you don't know is just your comfort with your movements. Obviously, you're coming off a knee injury. A lot of times, it's more mental than physical, which is. Part of the reason why I think he'll have some ramp up period, maybe that's some of the uh, desire to play in New England, ramp it up a little bit. And so that you get to Kansas City, it's not your first time out there when you're facing Patrick Mahomes, who's extending plays and making you twist left and right because he's breaking a play. Um, and so I do think that 
you know, based on where he is with recovery, I think that there's no not much of a question as long as there's no setbacks that he's going to play before the bye this week or next week. Now it's just whether or not he pushes to this week. You probably see him in a limited count, or if we say, "Hey, let's just let's just give it one more." Yeah, and uh, one thing I and this might be a little controversial what I'm about to say, but uh, spiritual people are usually pretty damn confident and 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 uh, determined people. Absolutely. Uh, from what I've from what I've yeah. seen and been around, that's, you know, whether you see, whether whether you whether you see Tua or Ramsey, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual people have a there's a uh, a disposition about them mm -hmm. uh, that that they're they're they don't really waver much. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. They have a mm -hmm. lot of conviction on whatever they're doing. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, and so that's why. I don't think confidence is going to be a problem for him. Just right. like that's what I tell everybody. That's what I've been telling everybody about how Uno is wired, that it doesn't matter what the fuck happens to that guy. You can scream all you want at him. He can bust his hip. You can sack him. You can do whatever you want. He's going to come back at you. Right. Whether you like it or not, it's not, you know, he's just one of those kind of dudes, you know, it's just one of those kind of guys. And I, and to me, I, you know, Ramsey, I don't think is going to lack any any confidence out there. And again, he hasn't had any setbacks. So it makes all the sense in the world to play him. It makes all the sense in the world to get his feet wet in New England right. against the team that really isn't a scary quarterback. And then get you prepared for a guy like Mahomes who's going to hang on to the ball for an extra half a second or a second mm -hmm. and, and buy himself some time with some legs. And he makes it that much harder for defensive backs. It's not that they're receivers are great it's that the quarterback is great and will buy extra time for the receivers so that becomes a challenge so there's many reasons to hold him out one more week or to play him either way they've crossed the threshold they yeah. have yeah period he he's he's killed the timeline regardless like right. of course there's of course there's going to be a lot of if it is it this week or not right because we're in a now society but to me, it's less about whether it's the Patriots or the Chiefs and more that they thought this guy was going to come back middle of December. And here we are. Um, what Sunday will mark Sunday will mark October 29th. We're talking about October 29th, possibility of, of beating it by a month and a half. And even if it's next week in Germany and the Chiefs, he would have beat it by over a month um, in early November. And so that that is that's pretty pretty uh pretty remarkable and knowing that you're going to have your Jalen Ramsey back like remember how excited Dolphins fans were uh about getting Jalen Ramsey that's the piece that put them over well now you're sitting at what five and two potentially six and two if you win Sunday and you hadn't had Jalen Ramsey for the first half of the season and so now you add you know that it's essentially like a huge trade deadline pick pickup again right like you're essentially making a big trade at the deadline to get you over the top ideally right and so i think there's plenty of reason to be excited and i hope that dolphins fans like like i said if i'm picking i still think that it's more likely than not that ramsey plays but if he doesn't play for some reason if they do hold him back i don't want dolphins fans to be like oh man this is you know i think i think you're still on the right track and it's if anything it would just be a coach being a little conservative um with a guy's rehab who was out for three months I have no doubts that X is playing. When you practice on Thursday, you're playing, mm -hmm. right? And Connor and Connor too, right? I, I would lean towards both of those guys playing. They've been they've been practicing this week. Like Connor's been practicing um with the starters. There hasn't been much of Liam with the starters, uh Xavier in the same way. And so that signals to me um both of those guys are prepping and the team's prepping them to play. The one thing I will say is groin injuries are a little tricky, and that we saw on Sunday. X just couldn't get it warmed up. Connor just couldn't get it warmed up and move the way that they wanted to move. And so it may be a situation where they're on the positive side of questionable. I still expect both of those guys to probably be questionable on Sunday, but they're on the positive side. Like, Hey, if pregame workout goes well, we're good, right? Like as long as, as long as, you know, we don't see anything that concerns us, we're good, but it may still be a, Hey, we've got to check just in case type situation. And so, um, that would be the call for them. I think Connor, since he's missed the last couple of games, is probably a little further along 
on that groin. Um, X, because he's had those issues in the past, I'm just a little wary of rushing him back. And so I know he wants to play, but um, if, if I had to choose one, like one who would be the surprise miss, I think it would probably be X more than Connor. From the comedy department, Dalvin Cook wants a trade. Hmm. Your thoughts on that? Um, I think the Dolphins made a right move. You wanted your bag, bro. You wanted your bag, right? Yeah. Dolphins Didn't made the right move staying, staying put. The grass is not always greener. Um, I, I think the reality is it was very important for Dalvin, and I made that clear in the time, to get what he thought he was worth. Um, I wouldn't say that he was only chasing the bag, but I would say that was a big factor in it. Like he wanted to go to a contender. Yes. He thought the jets were going to be good with Aaron Rodgers, And that was a factor. Like, I don't know if he would have taken the same deal with the, you know, Arizona Cardinals. Right. But of the teams, if he's battling between one contender or another money was the driving factor. Right. And so sure. he got $7 million, but I think he, whether he said it or not, was probably betting on, Hey, I can beat that kid out. You know, he's coming off a torn ACL, Brees Hall. There's no way. Like, they're saying in theory that we're going to split reps, and but I'm better than this kid, you know, and and he hasn't been. That's just the reality. Like, Brees Hall is averaging six and a half Brees yards. He's a star, year. bro. And so Brees that's, Hall is a star, bro. Yes, okay? and, this is what, and this is the reality. Like, and I like Dalvin, um, but the reality is um, some people were concerned about him being older and him losing some juice. And him being more of a situational player than a, a a a full lead back, and you're running behind the same offensive line, and Brees Hall's averaging six and a half yards a carry, and Dalvin Cook is averaging less than three yards a carry, and so, I mean, you do the math there. If 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 he went and and Brees Hall was playing poorly too, and they both were playing poorly, you could say, okay, maybe it's the offensive line, maybe it's the scheme, maybe it's not having Aaron Rodgers, but if one of your backs is top of the league and one of your backs is below average just saying you're just getting outplayed and so um yeah i mean i'm sure the jets would also be interested in the trade to get the get rid of that money given that it hasn't worked out i don't know that there's a team right now out there there's a reason why dalvin cook didn't get that deal from everyone he was not he was out on the market for a while and he's performed worse and so i don't imagine there's a lot of teams that are lining up to say we're going to pay the rest of your contract and give an asset to give get a guy that we could have got for the same price uh, in the off season, and so yeah. I'd, I'd imagine that unless they are giving some stuff away, like giving, like hey, we're gonna pay a salary down to the minimum, and then you swap us seventh round picks in two years, you know, like the Claypool type deal to right. essentially dump them. I don't know that there's a ton of value uh, elsewhere for them. Right, and and by the way, for the Jets, I was talking about this before you came on. If you trade him and you have a young quarterback right now and yep. Brees does get injured, now you put your young quarterback out there with nobody to help protect them back there. And so in the end, if you're not really getting a higher pick and you're just doing some late pick swap, it's actually just – it's better for you to just keep the guy as an insurance policy just in case something happens to Brees so you can help out Zach Wilson because – if once you lose Brees, oh my God, it'll be really hell for right. for Zach Wilson. You know what I mean? So right. why even make the trade if you're the Jets for some late pick swap that really doesn't really help you anyway? Whereas the insurance policy is almost better to have around. And then the other part about all of this, and you na you nailed it uh, when he said, you know, when you you're thinking. Oh, well, I could beat this young kid out. And that's been the problem, I think, with Dalvin and his agent from the get-go. They thought there was going to be some big trade market. Mm -hmm. They thought there was going to be some big free agent market. They thought somebody was going to want to make him their number one back and make him their bell cow when bell cows really don't exist that much anymore. Right. They're rare to find. And then you have the 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 if if you, that's what you were really thinking. Yeah, hey, I could go out there and beat Brees Hall. Wow, dude. Did you watch Brees Hall? Do you really know who he is? He's a because I know I'm a Dolphins fan, but right. I'm gonna give Brees. He's a freaking star, bro. He's a heck of he's a and, and he's and he's I love about, him. we talk about recovery. We talk about recoveries with Ramsey, right? Um, because Ramsey's having a great recovery. Yeah, um uh, uh right. Brees Hall is having an incredible recovery. He was hurt in season last year in multiple ligaments. Right. There was concern of whether he would not only be the same back 
and, and um, uh, see the same back, but be the same back at all in 2023. Like it might have been like, hey, he eases his way back in, but we don't get the same Brees Hall to 2024. We're in October. And we're already seeing Brees Hall lead the NFL in yards per carry, you know, among qualified backs. And so it's uh, he's, he's a, he's a player, it's, bro. Player. It's, a, it's a it's a different it's a different animal. Um, they're fine. The Jets are fine with Brees Hall. Like Brees Hall probably should get more of Dalvin Cook's touches. If I'm being honest, yeah. he's talking about being frustrated with the touches. The Jets are probably wasting touches um, away from from you know. They have to. Therese, they have Hall. to. You can't wear out Brees Hall either. You know That's what I'm true. saying? That is true. That is true. He's coming off a knee injury. You got to kind of pace him a little bit here. So you have to use. That's what I'm saying for them, for a late pick, just bite the bullet, bro. We, you know, we listen to Aaron Rodgers. F it, dude. We'll keep him here for the rest of the season. Yeah. Because we need yeah. him. We need him. I don't think they're just in a position where they have to dump him unless it no. becomes a distraction, right? If, if or, yeah. or somebody's crazy and they're going to give you actually, you yes. know, like yes. a decent pick. Yeah. If you're going to get, if you, if you get any, really any pick, if they're willing to take the contract and give you a fifth or sixth round pick or something, then you're probably taking that. Um, even yeah. though it's a fifth or sixth round pick, like not um, six, but a fifth or fourth, then you're, yeah, you're moving already I, at that point. Say, going, man, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Dalvin Cook has not been a, a net positive for this team. And so oh. I'd imagine they feel like they can get Dalvin Cook's production from Michael Carter or whoever is behind them in that running back room. That's a great point. That's a great point. That is, uh, that is very true. Do you expect uh, Farmer Greer to make any trades? I actually don't. I think that he's already made his move with, uh, with Chase Claypool and uh, and Ramsey in the offseason, I think that you'll see a quiet deadline for uh, the Dolphins and Chris Greer. I think their thought probably is going to be we're getting Ramsey back, we're getting Teron Armstead back either Chiefs week or after the bye, we're getting Devon Achan back after the bye, um, and we're going to be in good shape. And so and we'll we'll wait, wait, wait a minute, Cam. Wait, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm just telling you what I think. I'm not, wait, I'm not, wait, hold on, hold on. Fans are all over the world are saying, come on, Cam. Yeah. I, 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 I can tell you. And no, I know. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold, on. Hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me say this real quick. I want to have some fun. I want to have some ahead. fun. Go ahead. Go ahead. Greer wants to corner the market on chases. <laughs> well, they're not going to go get Chase Young, bro. Come on. Here's what I would say. Um. You never count out Chris Greer. He's always taking the calls. And so would it shock me if Chris Greer had another card up his sleeve? No. Also know that it was not a pleasant experience for the Dolphins to go this draft without a pick until 82. <laughs> it worked out because Devon Achan was there, but they've now had a couple of years in a row where they haven't had a first round pick. They haven't had many picks. And they know they have some expensive guys coming up. Like all these contracts for these dudes are starting to kick in. Tyreek's cap number is kicking in. You're going to have to pay Tua. And so the way to supplement that is with cheap contracts. And so this is not a team that is looking to give away any more picks. And so, I, like I said, I would not be shocked by anything. I think they value their picks. Um, I would be interested if they could find a buyer, if they would try to trade a Emmanuel Agbo away. He's a guy who hasn't been a, a fit with Vic Vangio. Clearly, he's played well in small doses, limited opportunities, got some sacks in a couple games, um, but he only played three snaps this past week. It's clear that Vic Vangio does not see a a role for him in this defense, and so oh, he has wait a minute. So, so then, call Washington, corner the market on chases. So, so here's the issue: Chase Young. So you have Chase Claypool, Chase Young, and you're chasing the title. Let's go. And so you sound like a, a guy trading in Madden and saying, you know, I'm going to, you know, I, I'll give you a six round pick for Tyree kill. We got a deal, right? Dude, you know? I've, got, I've got bombarded with this chase young shit, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but on DM, I, 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 I'm I, like, I, I kinda hey, why don't out, we trade so. for chase young? And I'm like, bro, they have Agba and he can't play. Yeah. Like, and Chase yeah. Young is always injured. Why would you want to trade for him? I I think mean, chase Young can be had. I do not think that he will be Miami though. I could be wrong. Yeah. But I do not no. think he'll be Miami Dolphin. But the reason I brought up Agba is because, like, you, you always think about uh, uh, buying, right? Because they're a contender, and that's always a thought. But there are sometimes you can be a contender and sell piece or even a player for player trade, um, given you just have a better fit. The problem is Agba's got you know eight nine million dollars, seven eight million dollars left on his contract, and he is not a guy that people are probably going to pay want to pay that money. So you well, you may you may have to pull Tannehill. You may have to pull Tannehill. You might have to pay it down. Yeah, 
Yeah, you pick up a little bit of the salary, and then they give you a six rounder, and then yeah. you, you're able to move them off. Because what you're saying is, which makes all the sense in the world, dude, it's a great call on your part, because AVG has made him expendable. That's it. That's the bottom line. And I also think that, like, based on the scheme, whatever reason, Agba just does not that right. he does not value him in that role. Like, he views Andrew Van Ginkle as the best edge opportunity when one of the top two guys are starting. But also, he views Andrew Van Ginkle as an as inside linebacker. And so there was a lot of opportunities early in the season when Jalen Phillips was hurt that I thought Agba would get more. He got limited touches. He performed well. And then he still went back to his role. And so I don't think that he gets traded. Um, I know he talked uh, yesterday in the locker room. Um, and he mentioned that they haven't talked to him about it, and he imagined they would give him a heads up or give him something if there was something cooking. And so maybe something changes in the next three, four, five days. But as of now, he's you know he's got to deal with it. Like I, I'll tell you what, it's it's an interesting situation, right? And you know I don't know how I was feeling completely, but I can give you a, a general gist. If you're a player of his caliber who expects to play and to get touches um, and to get opportunities, you're entering the last year of deal. But you're on a team that's winning and you have to balance. Hey, I don't want to be a distraction because my team's winning. We're doing well in the team aspect. But me individually, I feel like I may be suppressed or not getting opportunities as a whole. What do I do? Right. Like if they were two and five, maybe you see an Agba trade request. But at five and two, is it worth disrupting the atmosphere? You know, when you think it's a chance that you don't get traded, probably not. And does that endear you to a defensive coordinator that you're probably trying to trying to beg to get more snaps with? Probably not either. And so you probably just have to suck it up and know that this is probably your last year on the on the team. And you just whatever reps you get, try to do what you can, put on film and hope somebody else will pay you uh, more than your snaps indicated in Miami. So. All right. What's uh, my prediction? I got the Dolphins winning. But I've been telling everybody, take the Patriots and the points, bro, because uh, I don't think the Dolphins are in the in the position to give them 10 points with the Patriots defense. Like, I don't fear their offense. and I think Miami can control it, but I don't think they're going to blow out the Patriots. So I like the Dolphins. I just don't like them within the points. I, I don't think you should be laying 10 points. You know, nine and a half, I think, is too much. So how, how do you look at the game both ways, the win and the points? Yeah, 10 points is a lot of points for uh, to give the Patriots. Like, the Patriots, they had a couple games where they were blown out this year, for sure. But last week, they played their best game of the year. They beat the Bills, and it wasn't just the Bills, like, like underestimating them. They played, like, pretty good. They've got their offensive tackles back. Like, we talked about injuries for the Dolphins. In week two, when the Dolphins played the Patriots, neither of their uh, the Patriots starting offensive tackles were in the game. And so that really affected their ability to run the ball, to, to protect. And they played behind a lot early in the game, early in the season. And so that game against the Bills, they finally jumped ahead. They were able to run the ball with Andre Stevenson. Mac Jones only got sacked once, and he didn't turn the ball over. And so I thought the offense actually held their own. And the defense, like you mentioned, has consistently been a really good group. It's been impressive. Um, they lost Christian Gonzalez. And I'm very eager to see how they guard Tyreek Hill this, this week because the first game, they only gave up 40 yards to Tyreek Hill. It was the lowest of a season. They played a lot of three safeties, uh, having him, you know, double coverage over the top, essentially, at all times. And in the second half, they put rookie Christian Gonzalez on him and shadowed him. And Gonzalez actually did a really good job. He had an interception on him. Of course, he had some help. It wasn't all one-on-one, -on -one, but he did a really good job on him. Now they don't have Christian Gonzalez. He's out for the season. But they have J.C. Jackson, who the Dolphins torched in week one, but has been playing tremendously in the last three weeks of the Patriots game. And so – I'm not sure which version are we going to get. Are we going to get the Patriots defense that can do what they did in week two and slow Tyreek Hill down? And Mike McDaniel essentially said you got to take what if they overplay Tyreek, everybody else has to eat. Or do, do they find a way to get Tyreek involved? You know, are you happy as a Dolphins fan if the Dolphins win a close game against the Patriots and Tyreek Hill doesn't go for, you know, 100 yards? Right. Like we get to a stage here with Miami where. You know, a win isn't enough. You know, it, 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 they I almost feel like if they won 24-21 and Tyreek had four catches for 46 yards, a conversation would be like, what is the Dolphins doing? Why aren't we, you know? And, and so this might be one of those games where I could feel like they they win an ugly quote-unquote game, 
But for them, it's we get through to the win. We get to Chiefs week when we're closer to the bye. I mean, if you've been around this series enough, you know it's going to get ugly. You know it's yeah. going to be close. Yep. Whether whether it was Brady coming to town, mm-hmm. it was going to be close. And Dolphins m- probably will lose. Sometimes we'll beat Brady here at home, actually. Yep. But a lot of times they'll play him tough. And yep. And and now that Miami's the better team, it's still going to be the same thing. The Patriots are going to play you tough. I don't. I, I why any you know if you're a Dolphins fan and you're expecting like you're demanding a blowout or you're disappointed that it isn't a blowout, then you really don't watch this series Absolutely. you know too well. You know what I mean? It's come on, bro. And one last thing, I know you probably have another guest coming up, but um, yeah. a lot of the uh, conversation this week in pregame, and I'll probably mention it too. I'm going to be at this game this week for NFL Network. Um, doing good morning or game day morning from nine to one. And so tune in. Um, but a lot of the talk will be the Tua's record versus Belichick, right? He's five and oh, he's dominated him, right? That's obviously a storyline and it should be. Guess who else has been talking that all week? The Patriots have been probably hearing this all week. The reporters there have been asking them. They probably had their, that in their mind. They know they lost week one, I mean, week two. And there's probably a sense of urgency and uh, with that team, with their record of, you know, we got to come out and punch them in the mouth, right? Until the Dolphins get rid of the narrative that they can't beat physical teams, particularly physical teams on the road, teams right. are going to be like, we're going to smack you and see how you respond. We're going to get in your face. We're going to mess up your timing. We're going to take chances. We're going to be aggressive with your receivers, and we're going to see how you respond. And so I'm eager to see how the Dolphins respond to what I expect to be a really – uh, really strong spirited effort from the Patriots this weekend. I'm with you. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Cameron Wolf and catch his work there at the NFL Network. Cam, as always, have a great weekend, my friend. We will catch up next week. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. There you go. Cameron Wolf. We unleash the Wolf Pack and KSDT CPAs. They are always ready to take care of you, folks. We talk about KSDT CPAs here for a while now. It's been two years. Uh, that we've been talking about KSDT CPAs and whether it's your home or business, KSDT is there to serve you folks. They do anything and everything pretty much. They can help you in payroll. They can help you with setting up the future of your business. Also, maybe for you for retirement purposes. If you're looking to kind of plan your retirement, if you're a crypto investor, they can also help you there. So for tax, for assurance, They do it all. And by the way, they're also hiring. They've got offices in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, 305-670-3370. Got a new office in North Carolina, and they're also hiring there too. 305-670-3370. Forbes, America's best tax and accounting firm. Top 200, man. All right. KSDT CPAs. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.